Yeah, there the bell goes. Danica is back. Okay, Annika and, and Christian is back. We're just waiting for Sumeri to join us. Um, gosh, what I have on the screen there, that I'm sharing on the screen with you, is what we're going to be doing in this session, and that is um, chapter 12. Chapter 12 deals with um, basically what we covered in the assignment now question number five with all the modern technology that's available and and it is important and and see this in the context i know that you guys are not signed up for a digital marketing course so the 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 amount of detail that's going to be covered in this section is is not on the same level as somebody who's studying digital marketing um, I know, however, and, and I think all of you know it as well, is that the um, importance of using modern technology and um, all the different smart devices that's available um, has become a norm. You cannot nowadays be in any profession, um, even a woman in the church on, 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 um, on a Sunday morning needs to know how to operate a PowerPoint slideshow. And stuff like that and, 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 and do live feeds from your cell phone and stuff like that so the, the world has changed forever and we are experiencing the fourth industrial revolution and that is basically IT taking over and, in, um, and, and artificial intelligence playing a part in, in almost all aspects of our lives if not everything so no profession in this case um, when we're dealing with qualifying you as salespeople of the future, none of, um, of, of, of the professions are actually um, um, are excluded from this. Everybody needs to know what is the most applicable applications in, and, and platforms available to do their job. And um, it's nothing that as, as is new to, um, to all of us because um, when you talk about um, when you talk about um, using modern uh, or using um, electronic uh, and smart uh, electronic smart devices in sales nowadays, it's not something that was forced on us as a result of COVID-19. Um, a lot of meetings, um, team um, Microsoft Teams sessions, um, Zoom sessions webinars online skype before that probably the first sort of um online um interactive meeting um, platform uh, for business um nothing of that is new to us um nowadays i mean and even well, a couple of years ago already you you can go onto a particular website and they have a demo video of how their products work i mean and that demo video would normally have been done by a salesperson standing around in front of you, um, throwing a couple of, um, or throwing stuff on a, on a carpet um, and demonstrating how this vacuum cleaner can actually clean the carpet. That was part of, the, um, of, of a salesperson's job. That, that has been replaced now as a result of um, technology um, with, uh, with different formats. And that is a little demo video. Um, before that, um, you go to a shop, you go to Macro, you buy yourself one of these desks that you have here in the office, but you find that it's almost in a small little box like that because inside there's instructions on how you can actually assemble that thing. So that was the first kind of um, that pamphlet with the instructions on how to assemble something, um, um, DIY assemble something that you bought. That was the sort of the first introduction to an alternative way of replacing the salesperson um, Yes, there is also still people in the sales department who can demonstrate how that works for the customer. Um, but we have become 
as, as, a, as a global society, we've become more sort of reserved. Like, all right, I want to check a video out first and how this works, and then you start finding out from friends how things work if you didn't understand the video correctly. Um, so this is not new to us. Using all this um, and, and, and using it in sales is, is not a new technique. It's something that has to be polished um, and adjusted a bit now as a result of COVID-19 because um, that's probably going to be the most used medium to sell um, in, in future than anything else. And then add to that the fact that more and more people now have become more familiar and they have, uh, are trusting online buying um, more. Uh, they will go on to Amazon, they will go, go on to take a lot. Um, they still have placed their own personal limits on what they are prepared to spend or um, if they're still unsure, prepared to lose if, um, if, um, because that's, that's, that's the greatest challenge that most people are buying online have or initially or converting to online um, buying is that um, you know, what if my money's stolen? What, what if I never get the products? What if I don't get what I, um, what I ordered? Um, you know what? Online, online shopping is not replacing traditional shopping. Online shopping is just a convenience. Online shopping, fortunately, was available for, uh, before COVID-19. And as a result of that, has just continued. More people shopped online. They shopped their groceries online because they, they, they weren't permitted to go to the shops in, when we were in hard lockdown. So most businesses have then also converted to that. And they could maintain their sales during lockdown uh, because of the online option that they have available. Um, I can remember um, it was um, we were still in hard lockdown and um, no access to any alcohol sales and stuff like that. But immediately when that the restriction was lifted, online buying became equally the week prior to that. The announcement was made, but it was only in, enforced two weeks later or a week later. That week, Online buying, liquor. People, I spoke to a friend of mine who works at the head office there at Pick and Pay, and he says they couldn't keep up. They had to employ more people to deliver because it's a, it's a, it's a home delivery service. Um, because you buy online, ding, ding, you pay, and they deliver within half an hour. They said they had to work out the schedule um, of um, and, and, and limit people on, on how many people per time slot can actually order. Otherwise, they couldn't get all the deliveries out. So it's... it's yeah, it, it's, it, and it's, it's, it's strange times that we live in, but um, again, as much as, um, as much as embracing the technology that we have available, uh, we have to be very careful that it doesn't completely take over the way in which you, we do it because the traditional principles on, of selling has remained the same. You still have to keep the customer happy. You still have to get the right product that satisfies the need of the customer and you still have to assist the customer in solving a problem by offering a great product that will solve that problem. So the ability to identify the need of the customer as a priority for a salesperson still remains the essential component of, of effective selling. The tools that you use um, is, is obviously has, has changed. So you have to, the um, sales, traditional salespeople have to upskill themselves in the sense of the after sales service that needs to be um, a, bit, um, a bit more effective. When, all days you can pick up a phone and phone somebody or you can quickly pop into your shop and say, listen, I mean, the, the product you buy was from me last month from my house. How are you doing? That doesn't happen nowadays. It's WhatsApps and SMS and, and, and um, so the, the follow-up and I think the, um, the follow-up and um, to ensure that you establish a, a long-term relationship with your customers um, is just done in a different format. Anybody can jump in at any time if you have any questions. Um, people, 
Um, one aspect that I think I spoke to, um, I spoke to one of the assessors in Pretoria yesterday when she was moderating the paper. There's a, there was a question in on e-commerce and the steps in the e-commerce, those four steps in e-commerce um, that was in the paper that was taken out because the manual has changed from 2019 to 2020 and the 11th edition, the one that we're using this year, has not got this in. So I cannot ask you a question on that. So that was taken out of the paper. So we're going to go through this section just as a sort of um, nice to know. Um, and it is important to know because I mean, there are different, if you look at the next slide, it is important for us to understand that um, um, e-commerce happens on different levels. There's the, there's, the, there's the integrated level where usually that is just between um, uh, e-commerce sites and, 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 and back-end accounting inventory systems that businesses keep and stuff like that. So it's information that they gather about um, the, the customers, the uh, existing customers, um, as well as, um, uh, for instance, their buying patterns, um, how much they spend and stuff like that. That, um, that, that. that forms part of gathering and collecting information that goes into a database and a database that is now available to um, not just to them, but to, to others as well. <coughs> I bought a, a, a product at Pick and Pay um, a while ago, and lo and behold, before the day was out, I got an SMS from um, Scooter's Pizza about their special. And it was linked to, they got the information from that database that, um, um, at, at, um, at Pick and Pay that um, um, indicated that I bought there on, on that day. So the information is out there, and that was that's that's part of your um, that's that, that's part of one of the levels of, of e-commerce, and that is the integration level, the transaction level. I think we're all familiar with, and that is where you go online and you buy something online, um, you pay for it, and um, um, it could be between a customer and uh, well, as we call it, the B two C, but it could also be businesses to business B two B that um, that use trend or. or that, that transact with each other. The interaction is the connection and, and entertainment, and turning your, your passive interest into a sort of a, um, active engagement. It's more your, your, your social um, media and, and emails and those platforms. And then your publications, um, again, on the way into work this morning, um, classic example, there's an ad on the radio that advertises, net, um, I think, Network 24 that have um, a number of, I think, five magazines and three newspapers in PDF format. You can get that on a daily basis. If it's a daily newspaper, you can get it on, on a monthly basis. It's a monthly um, 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 magazine. But you get those magazines and newspapers, all electronic format, PDF format, available for 99 Rand a month. People aren't going to buy, go out and buy newspapers anymore because, I mean, they can get it online and they can read it again because it's electronic. Um, and that's just a for, um, uh, an example of the publishing level of, um, of e-commerce. So e-commerce have progressed and gone through different levels as well. The one didn't necessarily follow the, the other. Um, they often happen sort of... Um, interactively at the same time. Um, although uh, most recently, I think, especially when we went into lockdown and factories couldn't operate um, more and more of your published, it has been the case the last number of years, but especially in the last six months, uh, 12 to six months, um, that um, printed publications, newspapers and magazines, the one closed after the other, month in, month in, for the last 12 months. Magazines have been around for 50 years, closed down. People were just not buying magazines and reading them anymore because it's available on their tablet. It's available on their phone. And why not use that? As I said um, to you earlier on, one of the essential components of, um, one of the essential components of effective selling is told that you identify, correctly identify the needs of the customer so it can enable you to offer the correct product to them that will satisfy that need. 
And the reason why we do that is because we want to retain that customer. And retention means we want that customer to return and buy from us again. Buying from you again is not going to make that customer a loyal customer, though. Offering him top-class service, that eventually makes him a loyal customer. And that is where customer relationship management is so important. How you treat that customer nowadays is more important than actually a transaction itself. People will be unhappy with, um, with, with the product, but if it was resolved in a good manner, they will go back to that company and still support them. It's often the case, and I think I might have shared it with you as well many years ago when our city case um, um, lighter than I am right now. I was still doing comrades and stuff like that and I bought myself two pairs of running shoes on recommendation of somebody who is a more professional runner than the novice like me. And that person says you need to have two pairs of running shoes. You need to have a racing pair and a training pair. Your training pair is the one that you wear every day when you go for it, and your racing pair is the one when you enter that half marathon or that marathon. That's what so by the time you get to the comrades, your racing pair is probably have about 500 Ks on the shoes where your training pair is probably almost dead because you did a lot more training than you raced. I did exactly that. And after I completed that comrades, which was a down from Peter Marisburg to Durban, um, my, the soles of my racing pair was just shot. I took it back to the company that I bought I took back the, the training pair as well. I said, listen, I bought this on the same day. Yeah, I can still remember you, sir. Um, you can see that this has been used more than this one. Now this has, if you test it, will show that it has a lot of kilometers because I train in this every single day. I've done two marathons with this one and a half marathon, and then I did the comrades. Look at the shoes. Yeah, but sir, you did the comrades. I said, that's not the point. The point is these shoes, the soles of the shoes are made and they are produced in factories that will at least um, guarantee you a thousand to thousand two hundred kilometers. It's like buying a tire for your, for your car. And then somebody says to you, yeah, but I mean, you drive with it every day. It's supposed to, I know it's supposed to, but the fact is not after 5,000 Ks. Um, and I think for me, it wasn't, I wasn't after getting another pair. Yes, I wanted, I wanted another pair because that shouldn't happen. But it wasn't that I didn't have an additional pair that I can actually still continue training in. But the manner in which it was resolved almost felt that I was the, I, I'm the guilty party here. I deliberately went out and I stuffed up the soles of the shoes. So to create a loyal customer, you need to ensure that you very carefully nurture um, that relationship with the customer. And it's small little things. It's ensuring that, um, like the example I've used to you guys previously, where the first time I flew with Emirates Air and I got onto the plane and we have just um, become airborne, the hostess came up to me and said, listen, so what would you like to drink? And I said, I would like a Jameson and ice, please. And she said, thank you very much. And then when I flew with the same airline, but a different um, crew, uh, months later, uh, when I sat down, I didn't, wasn't asked the question, what are you going to drink? I was, so would you like it, Jameson Nice now? How did they know that? They wrote it down, they put it in the database the first time. That's customer service. That's that small little thing. Picking up on detail, knowing that one of your key customers actually sons playing rugby trials or football trials this afternoon at Ajax. Those are important things. Just a little WhatsApp assistance and good luck um, with your son's trials this afternoon. Those are small little things that makes a huge difference. And that is what um, eventually um, makes that customer um, become a loyal, a loyal customer. So if you have, and I'm very scared to say this at the moment because of what has been going on the last number of weeks in, in South Africa with, with fun, <laughs> with cell phones being tapped and stuff like that, and people disappearing and getting killed. Um, the fact is, um, there are ways and means of getting information. Just remain ethical and don't cross the ethical, um, the ethical lines when it comes to how you obtain the information about uh, a particular customer. 
uh, is still such thing as privacy. Um, but I think if you dealt with a customer correctly from the start, and you from the start had the intention of building a solid long-term relationship, you will not push for certain information. You would, with your senses of observation, you will pick up on that. You will hear him talk on his phone to his wife while you are there about his son's trials this afternoon. That's, that's not eavesdropping. You were there. I mean, well, well, sorry, I mean, I don't want to listen to your conversation. No. But noting that and writing it down and remembering it and, take, and taking action on that is what a lot of customers, um, they, they, they don't see that as an invasion on their privacy. They do see that as very good service though. Any questions? Is there a lot of locker? Zach, you know, fine. Hang in there, people. It's the first day of the third term. It's the first day of um, only three weeks to go and it is quarter past three in the afternoon. We all have very, very little energy left for the day and not too much in our tanks either. Okay, just hang in there. Salesforce automation. Oops, Daisy, that was a bit quick. I'm not going to go to that. Let's go to um, Salesforce. Um, well, that's something that you will find in, in, in a lot of publications, um, pops up quite um, regularly. Um, SFA, what is SFA? It basically means Salesforce automation. It means that you, ha you, you haven't replaced your salesperson with a bot. You have just given that salesperson additional technology to use to make him more efficient. Um, and specifically referred to, I think, data capturing. Data capturing in the past, I know salespeople, my dad was a sales person selling insurance for more than 30 years. Um, files and files and files of paper, detail were written down. You rock up at a client and you open and choof, you've got one of those uh, lever arch files with all the information on that client. That's, that's how it was done. Now that will be available on your phone, all that information. So. Salesforce automation does not um, refer to replacement of an, a human being with, with, um, with a robot. It refers to using technology and specifically data capturing software programs that will allow you to have more information that you will ever have if it was done manually. Okay, Salesforce automation. Um, that's not in your manuals, but I've taken it as an additional um, an additional image just to make sure that you understand the um, the overall um, or get the big picture of what Salesforce automation includes. Um, and as you can see, it's it's not just one; it's not a person being replaced by a robot. There's much more that you can do if you have automated your sales um, process. You're not going to get this in exams and said, listen, um, there are missing issues, missing items, place the right, missing item, drag and drop. And no, this is just to give you an idea of how big Salesforce automation is. Right. Um, generations of Salesforce um, automation software. Um, I think we've dealt with the first one already, Gen generation one was when the personal information and contact management, getting all the details onto the database, capturing it, making sure that you update it and that you don't get WhatsApps and SMSs from um, companies that say, sir, your vehicle is due for a service. And I said, I've sold that vehicle four years ago. Again, it means that somebody somewhere did not update the system correctly, or <laughs> in this case at all for that matter, and they still thought that I was the owner of the vehicle. Um, the networking component uh, means that uh, it allows you now not to be isolated just as the sales department of your business, but that you have a link to all the other departments in your business as well. Because if you are, for instance, a lecturer in business marketing at um, Prestige Academy, um, you should know that um, there is a specific action that's being launched by the marketing department where they are pushing um, for careers in marketing, for instance. Um, so 
it's an interaction with what everything else that happens in the business, but also um, a network of external uh, sources that you can use. Um, it's almost inevitable that you as a, to be a successful salesperson that you will um, need to have or must have a very, very um, big network. Um, it could include salespeople from other businesses who are also in sales. Um, because remember, if somebody buys a vehicle, he eventually needs to buy tires. He's not going to buy the tires from the dealership that he bought the car at, but he's going to buy it from a tire manufacturer. And if you into, um, if you have a tire shop, for instance, so it's 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 just broadening your network so that that um, you can um, that you can benefit from other companies making sales uh, because it might benefit you, but only if you're part of that network. And that that's Again, just networking people is taking somebody to the football game um, and entertaining that person, um, and establishing a relationship, inviting them over for a bar and stuff like that. It's, it's on a personal level because um, you knowing that person, you're no threat to him in his business. In fact, he's gonna benefit from it because the next time that somebody comes to his shop, to buy tires or to my shop to buy tires, um, he might drop something that he's looking for a new vehicle for that matter. That's the reason why he's, um, he's, he's replacing all four his tires so he can get a better price for his vehicle when he trades it. Then I know, oh yes, my friend sells vehicles. Okay, so I'm going to say, listen, so and so, this is detailed, he might be in the market. That's, there's nothing wrong with that, people. That's, that's networking, that's sharing information. But remember, networking only works if you work the network. That information is also, if you're not calling those friends and, 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 and using it, there's no point. So it is very important. Um, and then um, the last generation that technology enabled uh, selling, uh, it just allows people to, I bought um, a vehicle about 10 years ago. Uh, my son was on a cricket tour in Neisner. So on the way back um, from Plate where we stayed, I drove through Nisner on a Saturday morning and I saw a vehicle and I was, I was sort of in the market, but no, no, I've got time to kill. The game's not been rained out, but it's a delayed start. So let me quickly go in. There was no salesperson. I haven't driven that vehicle. There was no salesperson to assist me on that Saturday morning to take me for a test drive. Um, I saw the vehicle. I was quite happy. Um, I, I, um, I, I went on to... Um, uh, car finder and I saw the vehicle and got more detail on it and I bought that vehicle without driving it without sitting in that vehicle because that salesperson eventually made the deal because it was done online I bought the vehicle he drove through to Cape Town um, to collect my vehicle that I was trading on that that transaction was all done electronically even the signatures that was done electronically on the contract an example of the integrated um, technology that we use in can be used in the sales process. Any questions? Everybody still awake? Anika is not awake. Anika, what are you doing today? Are you going to give us a call today or not today? Sorry. We like you here on the other side. Het is op een oomelijk mooi, maar morgen gaan het reen, die souvenir. Ek het die idee, ek gaan ons, ons gaan een beetje druppels kry later vanavond en, en dat morgen. Dit is een beetje koelerig, ek moet sê. Dit is nog nie heel te mal. Uh, ek denk ons het van winterreg en ek weet nie wat in gegaan nie, maar dit is definitief nog die lengte nie. En ek denk ons gaan sommer van winter af strijd met soemer, toe lijk het my. Maar um, nee, solank het um, nog mooi lijk, is het fijn. Maar um, daar kan van die berg kan mense ons maar altyd snaak so weer in die tyd van die jaar. Um, of actually, deze dag kan mense en het kree so iets sê nie. Dis, dis my asof het permanent snaak so weer is. Weet ons dan nou donder weer en in, in, in aardbevings gehad in Durban wil oor die naweek. Wat het jy self al so iets ingedink. I never expect to have an earthquake in Durban wil. Um, maybe when I fall off my bicycle when I'm mountain biking, but no, not, not true... Um, uh, 10 kilometers below the surface uh, kind of earthquake, but um, it wasn't bad. Did you feel it? 
Man, as ek nou die bank wat ek op die tafel reken, nie sien hoe skit ek die tafel wat ek nou voor my het nie, maar hy het so gang tot so derde gekon is, dat ek gedink het, maar okay, dit, dit, is, dit is nie normaal nie. Um, ek het niks gehoor nie. As ek iets gehoor het, het al geklink soos een lorry wat een bak geklap het, so bak wat geklap het, of een cracker groen. Ja, maar ek het nie maar dat nie, ek het maar eerst gehad, maar ek het vat om aan te hees, dat soos kaart is, maar ek het nie al vir ons uitdruk, maar dat soos jy vir ons die act is, maar die act is nie met sê, dat soos maar kort, maar die kaart is, Like Zachary said that he actually, he, he, he felt it. Uh, this was like a hard ride. He had his head on some, I mean, he just thought he was a car driving past because he had, he had the vibrations, but I mean, only when his girlfriend told him, he actually oh. realized that, you know what, yeah. But it's only, again, it's only news when you see it in, on the news or later tomorrow in the newspaper or somebody on, somebody on Facebook said, did you hear that? Did you see that? It's an earthquake, whatever. Oh my goodness. You know what? Um, yeah, strange times we live in, but uh, let's get back to how technology is shaping uh, sales. Um, the message again, like I've said the whole day, and we'll be done in 10 minutes, people, for the day. You get an early knockoff as well. Um, we've been here for a while, um, and you've done well, and I think it's good enough for the first day. Um, how, is, uh, how technology is shaping sales? Um, it's it's a question of embracing the in, embracing the additional um, abilities that it offers you to be more uh, more efficient as a salesperson, and not necessarily replacing your role as a salesperson or um, or um, being a threat to replacing you. Um, let's hope it stays like that. Um, those are all things, I think we all know the social media, selling the popular ones, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, uh, link, LinkedIn and Twitter is probably the ones that's most used um, by almost everybody for that matter. Um, Facebook is sort of old school, old people like us, but I'm not on Facebook. Um, be honest with you i quite quite frankly i don't know what people did who were in school with me and um you know what it's 40 years ago so <laughs> it's probably not going to be interesting anyway so I'm, I'm not on facebook um i don't tweet a lot but i'm on twitter um but i think once you when you're in um when you're a young vibrant salesperson for you to remain with the vibe and for you to remain current uh, and ensure that you don't miss you've got to be on all these platforms because that is um i don't i'm not interested in what somebody had, else had for breakfast um so don't tweet me and don't tell me photographs of what you had for breakfast or selfies that i'm busy doing this i, I quite i'm not interested in that <laughs> to be honest but i believe that if you are in that game um, and selling is that game. You have to be. You have to be on all platforms. Um, but anyway, that's just just my opinion. But it is very important. And those platforms are there to be to, to benefit from. There's no doubt about it. So let me leave you at the end of this, this chapter with that particular quote. We do not have a choice on whether we do social media. The question is, how well we do it. Um, it sort of summarizes what I just said previously. You, you cannot not do it. But you also can cause yourself great harm if you don't do it well. Because there will be somebody else who's doing it better. And I think that's the, that's the, the times that we live in. There's a, it's a very competitive time. We, um, I want new. I want the news before somebody else wants. I want the news about the earthquake before the earthquake actually happened. That's that's how we've become. We are so addicted to information. People will go days without food, but they cannot go a day without data. And I think that is um, just evident of the times that we're in. So if you're in sales. You must be on a good data package because you're going to be on all these platforms or have to be to ensure that you're effective in, in your sales. 
That's me for today, guys. Any questions? Thanks, Chris. Nee, Sorry. You can Ek wens, ek kan ook. Nee, wat is maar soos het is, um, jy het die eerste dag survive, well done. Maar ook op die kruk, met die bykie interruptions, hier in instability there, and some audio quality. Um, we can only improve from here on. Um, I'll make sure that everything that needs to be done, that I've written down on my piece of paper, um, I attend to, and that would be converting videos for you and ensuring that um, we do pre-recordings of the briefing sessions of your assignments, so at least you have that to go back on. Um, as If everything goes well, um, we will be Zooming again tomorrow at 20 past 12 for, um, for sales to conclude where we've left off today. All good with you? Zach said it's fine. It's all good. 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 Guys, have a good evening. Enjoy. I'll chat to you guys again tomorrow. That's all good. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, sir. Zach, I'll see you tomorrow.